what I had to do and this is enough for me Never meant to be a winner, never meant to be a quitter But this is our new satisfaction Chip thrills, chip tricks What? It seems like the way to live I'm apostate Ashley and today I am going to, to do something just a little bit different than what I've done in the past. I have thought of some of these immoral or barbaric or just weird stories within the Bible that I conveniently skated over or didn't even know anything about them when I was a Christian. So today I'm going to take you through some scenarios that are likely, such as a pastor preaching from a pulpit or a mother reading bedtime stories out of the Bible to her children and putting them in these regular scenarios, but with these messed up stories just to show how screwed up some of these freaking stories actually are. So without really giving much more explanation, let me just show you what I mean. All right, kids, it is great to see you this Wednesday evening for youth group. My name is Pastor Ashley. I would like it if you all took a seat. Open up your Bibles to 2 Kings 2, 23 through 25. Elisha was traveling to Bethel. As he was going up the hill, there were 42 children who were taunting him, calling him baldy. Say, go up, Baldy. Go up, Baldy. You know, you know what Elisha did? He called upon the Lord. Our wonderful Lord, justice was served because God sent two female bears to demolish those 42 children. Tore them to pieces. All dead. And then Elisha... He just, he went out, he was able to go on his way. The lesson that we need to learn today, teens, is don't you ever, ever taunt a man of God. All right, all right, everybody. Hallelujah, take your seat. Praise Jesus. We don't have any time to waste today. I have a very important story that you all need to hear. We, we need to talk about the truth of it. What this actually looked like. So today we're going to be learning about Noah's Ark. So if you imagine Noah and his family build an ark, bring in all the animals all over the world no matter how much it doesn't make sense, two by two, into the ark, male, female, so we can reproduce. No one his family just got really lucky. They are up in this boat. Everyone else is in the flooded waters, just drowning, crying out, asking to be let into the ark, but they're not a man of God, like Noah is. They all start to decay in the water. All of the plant life starts to decay. And somehow, miraculously, by the power of God, none of those animals ate the other animals within the ark. By the grace of God, there were no freaking issues with uh, any of the feces or urination within there. And by the grace of God, there was no issue with the lack of ventilation. Church, don't you forget, no matter how crazy some guy sounds, if he says that he is getting a message from God, you take him freaking seriously. Because you might be one of those people drowning a miserable death Go and be godly today. All right, Johnny. It's time for a bedtime story. We're going to read out of Genesis 19 and learn about Lot, his daughters, how he gave them up to a mob of rapists, and then got drunk and 
impregnated his daughters. All right, Johnny, it's time for another bedtime story. We're gonna be reading about Abraham and his son Isaac. One day, Abraham got a message from the Lord to offer his son as a burnt offering. So as they were traveling up the mountain, he was having his son gather wood and sticks to burn for the burnt offering. They saw no animal. Right as he was about ready to uh, murder his son, luckily our wonderful, our wonderful God brought a ram. Isaac got lucky. God then knew that Abraham feared the Lord. All right, church, quiet, quiet, quiet. Sit down, we have some serious business today. I need you all to turn your Bibles to Exodus 21, because today is the day that we are going to learn the instructions of how badly we can beat our slaves. All right, Johnny, we're gonna have a few quick bedtime stories just to go through all of the different ways that God kills children. Well, Matthew 18, six says that they should be hung by their neck and drowned in the sea. In Lamentations 2.20, it says that mothers should eat their babies. Then Ezekiel 5.10 says that fathers should eat their sons. Now, I hope you're not going to be hungry tomorrow because Lamentations 4.4 says we should starve our children. Leviticus 10 says to set you on fire. Exodus 12, 29, smite you. Deuteronomy 21, 21 says that I need to stone you to death. Good morning, church. My name's Pastor Johnny. If I could have all of you take a seat and open up your Bibles to Psalm 137, 9. Yeah, you heard me. We're going to be talking about this real stuff this week. So I'm seeing a lot of sad faces in the congregation. I'm just guessing that there's been nobody out there bashing any babies against rocks. Because nobody looks happy out there. I mean, if we were going to take this seriously, the Bible says you need to bash those babies' heads against rocks, and then you'll be happy. Nobody needs those antidepressants, anti-anxiety medications. You just need to go out there and bash your babies against rocks. All right, church is out. Everybody, go get your lunch. Remember, don't tip well. Don't tip well. And then, before the night is over, you better make sure you're bashing some babies against some rocks. Otherwise, your work week is going to suck. All right, church. It's nice to see you again this week. We have something a little bit different to talk about this week. In Genesis 38, yes, please, please turn, turn to Genesis 38 to follow along just to make sure that you are getting the instructions correctly. So today, church, we are learning the correct way that one should ejaculate, where they should ejaculate. So in this story, Judah is giving instruction to his son to go and impregnate his brother's wife. And lo and behold, the guy could not do it correctly. Instead of 
ejaculating inside of her. He ejaculated onto the floor and oh gosh, that is a no, no. You do not do that. God killed him on the spot. So men, you do not ejaculate anywhere other than your sister-in-law, inside of your sister-in-law, okay? Go and impregnate women that don't want to be impregnated and I'll see you again next Sunday. All right, women, thank you for coming to our very first women's meeting. I was a little confused on how much I could share with you and teach with you considering we're supposed to be in full submission of a man. We're not permitted to teach or educate or be in any form of leadership over a man. The more I thought about it, I realized, well, we are just a bunch of women here, so I can teach you. And this is pretty much the only place I can do that. Or maybe with children. I was half tempted to ask my husband to come and teach it for me considering it would just be much better coming from a man um, to tell us how we're not allowed to teach. We need to submit to them. Eve was the one that originally sinned to begin with. She is the original sinner. We are inferior to the men. If you're going to leave today and you take anything from this, don't forget, men are superior to us. Amen. All right, youth, if you could please take a seat and open your Bibles up to Numbers 31, 17 through 18. We are going to talk about how Moses gave instruction to kill all of the boys and any female that has had sex before. They could keep the virgins for themselves. If we can learn anything from this, guys is that if you're a virgin especially a virgin girl you have so much more value than anybody else does okay so chances are this is not going to be the only video i make that's like this because there are more stories than just this out there but obviously i personally do not find any value in any of these scriptures. I don't believe them either A, to be true or two, to be moral. So no, I'm not condoning any of these things. In fact, quite the opposite. I'm condemning all of these things. I think that this shows how barbaric the Bible is. And I mean, it's just the tip of the iceberg, but the Bible is completely barbaric. If you don't like some of the things that I said today, then I don't know, maybe you need to take it up with your God because this is all straight from the doctrine, straight from the Bible. I mean, you could tell me that I'm taking it out of context or whatever excuse you might have, but it is what it is. They are in the Bible and it doesn't make any sense why this is considered an infallible book with absolutely no error and from a benevolent God. How could that be? Also, just a reminder, I am not making fun of believers. I'm just making fun of what they believe in. And I cannot believe that I sp spent the amount of time that I did putting my whole life into this belief only to end up finding out that the book is filled with a bunch of bullshit. I gotta lay down, think I've done enough for today, do what I had to do and this is enough for me, never meant to be a winner, never meant to be a quitter, but this is how I lose satisfaction, ship through, ship tricks, what? it seems like the way to live. Oh, hallelujah. All right, all right. 
Everybody, take your seats. Why am I talking in that accent? <laughs>